No, first of all, thank you, you for giving me the opportunity to be here for last that three months and be a member of the center and attend to the seminar. And all of us, all of, all of you, for coming. I want to uh, begin apologizing for my English. I try to do the best, so I hope we can understand each other. Uh, yeah, I'm going to speak briefly about my dissertation. It's not a, uh, a work about Arendt, but Arendt is one of the most, um, most more important uh, inspirations for me. And I use their concept, maybe in, not in a really uh, corrected or orthodox way, but I try to put in dialogue with other uh, other people in the idea of develop uh, my own uh, reflections about the point, and the point is uh, how the global age is basically an age of displacement like a framework and not only like uh, something um, that happened once in the time and how is um, no connection or not really good connection between the political shape of the world and the reality of that world in our days and I begin thinking about that because I was identifying some paradox or things that I don't really understand. For example, that how how is possible that many people who live in one country are uh, citizens and member of the political community for other country, because their fathers or their grandfathers are original originally from that uh, country, and at the same time. A lot of people live there in that second country and they are not member of that political community even when they are living there and carry on their lives in that place. So one that was that was one of the paradox or main things that I see. And the idea is the basic thesis is that the, so the political shape of the world don't, doesn't pass with our reality and I try to explain briefly why I think that. So I'm going to read a little. Under my point of view there are three main fictions that dominated and hide the actual state of the world. One is the unitary, unitary fiction, and that's, the meaning is the globalization has tried to overcome national borders and different worlds in order, in order to make one global space. This process, far from living more connected and closer than ever, as usually believed, areas of shade are growing. Everything exists now into this global space. The distinction between inside and outside has faded, and with it, the distinction between center and periphery has also vanished. We find those border or dark areas in the heart of the most important cities of the first world. They are marginalized as well as marginal places in which it is very hard to live humanly. In that uh, little paper that I have written, I have tried to um, put an example about that movie. Uh, is uh, the movie is the visit the visitor, and if finally um, I can send it to the blog of the Hanan Center, I I can explain. You you can see there what I want to say, but now I have to continue with the second fiction. The territorial fiction. The, exp the expansion of mm, the globalization has blown up territorial divisions inherited from the national states period. The notion itself of a clearly delimited territory with a homogeneous and a specific culture manifested in the nation 
and that is capable of administrating and resolving the needs of mother and mothers that affects citizens living in it has vanished. Once the dimension of the world has widened, so have the mothers that save it. The third fiction is the fiction of security, and this larger frame, fragmented world, the notion of security has become the main concept of politics at all levels. In an attempt to ignore the mobility, speed and fragmentation of the world, the fiction of security has prevailed. The stance, the state, nation or culture into a fortress. <coughs> Thus is based my hy hypothesis on the statement that nowadays the shape of the world and its material concept oppose and deny each other con constantly. If we understand world matter as the group of experience that make up our world, we can assume that such experience defy or challenge the way in which we try to understand, order and politically administrate the world. This way of understanding, ordering or administrating the world is nothing but the shape, the political shape of the world. Modernity shaped the world politically on the basis of the notions of sovereignty and territori territoriality, where borders accomplish a double function, delimiting the territory and the political community. But global displacement, as well as the existence of an increasing number of out-of-place people, contrib contribute to break down classical notions of the political and philosophical modernity, especially the notion of citizenship. This reality forces us to reflect, to reflect upon how to create a world in which all people, in possession of the same fundamental rights, can cir circulate freely and defend their lives and their rights wherever they lie. <coughs> we are talking of human beings without a world, those who are forced to live inside a world that is not theirs, a world that despite being created and maintained by them with the daily work is not made for them. They find themselves in a world for which they are being used, but words, rules, aims and language are not their own and they have no con con conceiving for their enjoyment. The decisive point in that some human being was part in sustaining the world is not to be questioned. In contrast, are not a part of it, it does not belong to them and neither do they belong to that place. The superfluous, invisible, excluded and helpless people are not an existence in the world because due to helpless they are inside the world but cannot find asylum, rest or refuge in it. In it. They are a part of the machinery that moves the world but not inhabits of it. The people do not live in the world also, although they do live inside it, inside the world of others. After all we have said, to think about the political shape of the world leads us, in my opinion, to a reflection on citizenship in a globalized world. A reflection on the ways to make an existence of national states in a global world compatible with the def defense of the human condition of all individuals, whatever they origin, wherever they are. <coughs> this implies a deep recon reconsideration of the right of belonging to the political community, a transformation of the concept of citizenship itself to try to give an answer to the, to the reality of the present world. It means basing the constitution of the world on the right to have rights enunciated by Hannah Arendt. This is the right of all people to be treated as subjects of law, independently of, their, of other considerations, and that this culminates in a political structure of the world capable of assuming the idea of a cosmopolitan citizenship, 
not linked to the, ter to the territoriality of the sovereignty, a non-exclusive citizenship. My position is based on the statement of human condition as the main category from which to derive the notion of cosmopolitan citizenship. I admit it is not possible for me to rely on a theoret theoretical basis for that notion of to right to have rights and human beings in general, and this has stopped me from going any further in my argumentation. <laughs> However, this not prevent me from indicating that human rights are essential to defend human beings from violence, nor from relying on history to find respect towards the human condition as the case done to think of a new political shape for the world that is more fair and integrating. The idea of a cosmopolitan citizenship attempts to invert the relationship between belonging and origin. If I had to know the individual's origin regulated his her belonging or not to the political community, now this relationship could be inverted so that the right to belong to any political community derives from the previous right of all humans to be considered always and in every circumstances as subjects to law. This means turning the appeal to the human condition into the latest data from which to their, to their right, their right to belong to any political community, they demand with no exclusion whatever their origin. On the attempt to eliminate or at least reduce to a minimum the exclusion assumed by the distinction between citizens and, and non-citizens non between us and the others, typical of the traditional concept of citizenship. I understand belonging as the right to belong to any political community, to be treated as a subject of law in every place, in every place and in circumstance. This is therefore a reflection about the political shape of the world, about the human condition and its capacity to, de to derive from itself the human right to migrate without res restrictions as a corollary of the, of the recognition of all human beings as legal, as legal entities. The reflection upon a new political shape of the world is specified in a reflection upon a cosmopolitan citizenship that is nothing but a consideration on human condition and the limits of the political community. So that's the point and the time is up. <coughs> well, thank you. Um, I'll just start. Um, Arendt is often worried about um, preserving boundaries, whether in concepts or other places. And in fact, she argues that imperialism, the idea of uh, infinite expansion and the loss of political boundaries uh, and state territories, uh, is one of the primary origins to totalitarianism. Uh, in the sense that to expand to an ever larger world, the global world actually means to lose the world. I'm wondering, I mean, do you see this idea of cosmopolitan citizenship as something that comes from her, A, and B, you know, is it something that she would, I mean, is this something you're arguing sort of in spite of her or with her in, in your idea? I think with her, because, uh, Science and the state and the political community is like a, an instrument to, to carry on a human life in that way and to, to narrate a life and a story. And in that case, uh, to this, uh, I think that the idea of the limit, like the border of the meaning as well, it's, it's really important to, to, to prevent it. 
but I think that it's there's no opposition to hold that and hold that the origin is not the main thing to be a member of the political community of that political community. Uh huh. So it's, I try to disconnect that two things. But it, but you're sort of suggest so you're suggesting that we keep the political communities mm -hmm. and we just make no no limits on immigration yes. or emigration. Is that is that the idea? Yeah, the idea is that uh, we are going to live in a in a world with national states that have to manage the political things, but we can think uh, a way to make that compatible with the, the idea of a right to migrate without restriction, and that's more or less the the, the idea. And I take. Mm, I think that there's mm, that is compatible with not building a empire and not being in that in that point. So not thinking in a global, in big state that manage all or other solutions in in that way. For example, I was thinking in the idea of a human. But isn't isn't this going to create? very much exactly what you said at the very beginning, the sort of idea of a global fiction that, while it may seem that it's going to uh, make one world, uh, I, mean, it's, it's going to, I mean, it's going to reduce meaningful differences in places and create a thinner idea of what it means to be a person, a human being. Because part of what you're saying is take away the fact that I'm a German or I'm a Malaysian or I'm an American, take the way, take the part of that away. I think that to be a German or to be a Spanish or something like that is something that have, like the, like Aristotle says, have many meanings. Mm -hmm. So I can't, and I think that in nowadays, mm, <coughs> many people who have uh, the plurality, the plurality inside them. And have been was born in one country, have one uh, language, and then moved to other, lived there for 30, 20, 40 years, mm -hmm. and that is as well part of the the biography. So I I prefer not to talk about national identities, and talk about plural biographies, and in that way of that mm, process to build a story about myself, about my the role that I, I that I am, with all the plural meanings of what I am or where I, where I where I come from, but mm, as well where I live, and I think that there there are many ways to understand what's the meaning of being a German or be a whatever. I. Am. I'm going to open it in a sec. I understand the sort of feeling of I'm a cosmopolitan citizen, and, uh, and, I, and I, I respect that aspect of what you're saying quite a bit. Um, but from an Arendtian perspective, which, again, you, you said it's not an Arendt thesis, so I, I, this may be unfair, but um, uh, you know, the right to have rights is something that comes from being a member of a national state, mm -hmm. or potentially a federation of, loosely federation of national states, mm -hmm. but simply not the world. Uh, it doesn't seem to me that moving to the world gets you anything from a right to have rights perspective, um, and it makes the idea of politics, where you can act and appear in a common stage, and the idea of creating a common identity, almost impossible. <coughs> um, it's hard enough in a big national state today, let alone on the world. Uh, and so, I, I'm wondering, you know, if you just don't think that's a problem, that you lose this common, these, these different common identities that are part of what it means to be a national state. No, I think that mm, that component of... I mean, it's one thing to be a cosmopolitan and have your, you know, I'm this, I'm that, I have multiple identities, but in a political sense, yeah, you need a... You need yes. a place to yes, be a course. political whatever you can call it, whether it's a Martian or an Earthling, 
or a German or American or Malaysian or Standard. Mm -hmm. Yes, but I think that uh, we can use a concept of the, <coughs> the law and think that uh, as in other countries it's possible to mm, carry on trials for crimes against human, the human condition, the human rights. Yeah. So, and that happens now, and we don't have a, an international penal court, court that really carry on that trials, and that happens. So we can think in something like a net for all that democratic countries that respect the human rights and put at the, at the basis of, the, of that political community the respect of the human rights in that way in which the right to be great is only other of the human rights and other countries could defend you because that that ha ha happened with you is <coughs> that is against the human condition in general so and I think that it could be we can think in a net in that way and the, pol the political meaning of being in one concrete national state, I think it's only a, a fact. I mean, you are there, you are living there, and I think that you have the right to be a member e and be a subject mm -hmm. and carry on with your life there <coughs> and decide what you want to do. This is informal, so anyone who wants to ask or intervene. I'm curious, even I mean, even if we did a move away from our insistence on preserving boundaries and the idea that you have a right to have rights within your nation and your state, but that this wouldn't function in a global level, it seems to me that the idea of a cosmopolitan citizenship would become a problem in that you would still be a citizen of your state. You would be a citizen of your state, but also a citizen of the world. And to what extent would the, this kind of cosmopolitan citizenship you're talking about become almost a last resort in the sense that we talk about human rights? Because he, um, insofar as you know, these state citizenships still exist, those who don't necessarily identify with the citizenship they hold to their state, because as you say, they have this multicultural background, it will still mean more in this world, in a political sense, to belong to a state than it would to belong to a cosmopolitan citizenship. So are you, I, I mean, I guess, are you arguing or saying that the preeminence of a state citizenship would have to um, be kind of succeeded in favor of a cosmopolitan global citizenship, or do you not see those in, in I guess, in tension with each other? If you want to answer, you should go ahead. Oh, okay. Now, I think um, there's no problem, so there's no double citizenship concept in that way. Okay. So, it's only that you, or me, as a Spanish and citizen, uh, I should be able to be recognized in other countries, like, like a member of the political community, if I live there for enough time, and I want to belong to that political community. And it, that's, I mean, that's something that happens when you are invited to that country to work there. Yes. And after a period of time, you could become a citizen. So if that could be able to, to, to do that, if you could be able to do that, if you are invited for the country, maybe you could think in a political order in which you could ask for that and not to be in that dark side of the reality with your invisible and you can do anything yeah i think the way that i see it is that like <clears throat> part of the point is that like um the idea of like the modern nation state kind of precludes the inclusion of immigrants into the legal process um and like rather than this being like a dilemma on a like global level like it's something that is like can't be addressed within the nation because of the like structures of citizenship. Um, it's not something that can be fixed by the state that's um, like perpetuating these ideas of like citizen and other because the nation isn't prepared to 
like adapt its own consciousness to allow others to be incorporated. Um, and so I think what like what I got was the main point was like perhaps a shift away from a focus on national identity when determining citizenship and more of allowing like the broad shared experience of being human to dictate when one is recognized with like where they're living or where they're existing. Yeah, that's, that's the point. I mean, the example that I have used in the paper is about uh, a guy. He comes from Syria after the war. His father was killed there, and they come with his mother to the United States and apply to be a refugee here. Three years later, they, the government says, no, you have to go. They don't know. The mother don't say him. And they carry living here in like an uh, illegal. So that could be an um, object to thinking about if that pe the people should or shouldn't do that, but that happens in our days. And most of the people that are living here in Spain and other countries are living there without permission. So, And in that way, they carry on with the life. They live here. So that idea of fortress, it's not real because the, border, the borders are mu much more borders that we want to see. And that happens. And they are living here, working here, paying taxes, or all. And one day, they should go, immediately. And it's like your life, hold, and all stop. And you are not a person in that way, because you can't argue anything. And you are an object of an administrative process, and you have to go. For example, in Spain, and in, in general in Europe, when that happens, and for example, somebody asks you for your papers in the subway, and you don't have it, and they discover that you are illegal, suddenly, and that could happen, for example, in, in the north of the country, you are picked up, put it in a bus, and put in the prison, and maybe in another city, in the other part of the country, you can't call, you can't say anything that only three days after. So the <coughs> you have friends and life and many things to do and, and that's completely disappeared. And you were put there during three months expecting a trial and then in most of the cases you don't have committed anything illegal. And you are going to receive only an uh, economical penalty. You pay your, you pay that, and you could stay. But during that time, you are in prison, in a in worse in a worse situation than a normal uh, person that makes something illegal. So that's the the thing. If you that it's not, it's been residence in Spain is like to make. Uh, something wrong with your car because there is only an administrative penal and not a um, um, I don't know I don't say criminal. a criminal could you think that all the people who don't drive good their cars would be put in jail for three months with in that situation I mean that's the kind of dark area in which I'm thinking. So I'm not thinking only in a part of the world, in the desert, in which you are alone and you are like in the wild, wild west. <laughs> I'm thinking in that, in that areas that are one of them in Madrid is in, in front of my house. So okay. uh, do do country do you think countries should have the right to determine who can? Emigrate into immigrate into the country or not? I don't think so. What's left of a country once you can't determine who can immigrate into your country? Yeah, that's the problem. <laughs> that, that why the only thing that defines a nation is to so the nation and the state is not a collective a commitment in building a better society with not. some values. I think that maybe not, because if well, that's was, not the point... Then, then why, why bother having nations? 
No, I mean, I think that that should be the point. And in that case... But if you're going to do that, don't you have to be able to determine, limit who can come in and who can stay? I mean, don't you have to, you know, say, here's our people, here are the people who are going to build something. Mm -hmm. You can't just let anybody walk in who wants to walk in. But what happens when the people is there? So, I don't think in, in a way in which we have... Well, best brothers. No, yeah, we're breaking, but then you kick him out. Why? If somebody breaks into your house, is that okay? Because they should no, be allowed to stay there. No, but I don't think that the state is in my house. That's the point. That's a good question. I mean, I don't think that the citizens are the proprietaries of the state. The citizens are what? The I'm properties not, the of the state. The owners of They're the not. state. Of the state. Yeah, I don't think so. That's that's the point. And for that reason, I think that that people could be not coming, they are there. So the difference is they could carry on their lives like now, working, but with rights, or they should be in the dark side of our lives. That's the point. It's not something about all the people are going to come to Spain because we are in hard times, so I don't think so that all the people, for example, <laughs> I don't think, but in Spain now are living there around 3 million people illegally and they are working and they don't pay taxes because somebody has employed in that way. So it's not something that is going to happen, it's something that happened now and that we have to resolve and we have to decide if we are really democratic states that respect the human rights or not. But I think there's a huge difference from recognizing a problem you have in your country and recognizing that there are a huge number of illegal immigrants that you cannot just get rid of these, you know, three million people. And there's a huge difference between that and saying that we should make it a policy that from, you know, that it is 100% from now on absolutely okay for anyone who gets into a country to stay there. Yeah, the problem is that uh, when I talk about displaced people, I'm not thinking in other people really different from me, because now I'm here, I'm, uh, I'm studying, I'm writing my PhD, and I'm living abroad. And in other way, I am displaced as well. Yeah, but you're legally displaced. Yeah, yeah, yes, that of course, but I mean, I think <coughs> that maybe, I don't think that mm, the 90% of the people is going okay. I don't think so. And I don't think that I'm going to change all the political shape of my world to include uh, a few people. That argument is, I think it's not an ethical argument because even if the number is a few people and I believe that I'm going against the human condition of that people, I should change it. In one point, I think. And in other way, I think that the, that displaced people is potentially all the people. Because in my view, the, displaced, the displacement in our days is an economical necess necessity of our world. So there are many people living in some countries and the wealth country, the wealth country are others. And there are no many people living there and they need more people to work in that places. And the only question is, you are American, you have a PhD, you can speak three languages, so you are going to work in a better country, in a better situation. If you come from China, the same, but maybe if you come from um, Niger, you are going to move to Spain to work in the country, in the... Yeah, you know, but... That's the point. So it's not something that happened with some part, specifically, especially kind of people. It's something that happens, in my view, because the system now, in the global age, asks for more people in some countries. Um, yeah. uh, so I, I kind of I, I like the idea of um, kind of trying to recognize and give give kind of legitimacy to something that is already an, an inevitable trend, as, as, as you seem to be kind of identifying it. And um, I agree with that. I think there is, there is, a, there is a certain kind of tide that uh, people are, you know, that the bureaucracy of individual nations is, 
is you know does is not kind of up to, uh, you know it's not up to the task of kind of recognizing that and I think on, on one level it's very important that there is that there is the possibility of of you know kind of expanding the options of what it you know what it, what it really means to kind of to have to, to be a citizen or to become a citizen and I, I sense that you're you know that you that you are that you see a lot of good in people and that you think that if, if they, they go to a, a, a country that they inherently go there to become you know productive members of that society and that, that, that country but there are also you know there are people that um, they, they go to a country and they, they don't want to be a part of they don't want to be citizens they really just want to kind of reap the benefits and the fruits of that of that society without making a contribution and I think that might be you know that might be a, a problem to, to grapple with and, and, and so I ask you know do you think that um, that you know there has to be some kind of process by which to identify someone's you know kind of willingness to to you know their merit as a, as a as a productive member of society not just you know kind of subscribing to certain rights and being recognized as a citizen wherever they go as a citizen wherever they go but also you know the, the kind of converse of that you know their ability to you know engage in in you know with in civic duties and to you know make contributions and do you think there should be some kind of system of, of recognizing that and, and meriting that and legitimizing that? Uh, how could I say that? I think it's not a merit for me to be a Spanish and live in Spain. It's something that ha happened. Yeah. In that way, it's really difficult for me to judge if all the people who want to live in my country is... Uh, good for live in my country because I don't have to do anything. I only have to, I was born there and I could be a criminal or not, but I'm there. And that idea of you are in your natural place, mm -hmm. uh, I can't hold it in, in, in that way. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you are for other country and come to others and you are a criminal, you are good to be put in jail like all the people. But I can't identify a process to see why you could be able to stay with me and your partner not. Mm -hmm. And for example, that idea of that happened in Spain uh, after the Civil War, most of the people go to Mexico, for example, and to Latin America in general. Now, most of that countries in which the, the Spanish people were after the war. The people from that country, if now they wanted to move to Spain, they should to apply to uh, and ask to be to good stay there. That happens, that not happens, 60 years ago, for example. Right. And most of the day, because one of the fictions is thinking that now we are living in the age of migration. And that, it's not true. The historical migrations between Europe and America at the beginning of the 20th century and at the were bigger, maybe not in, in number, in the, but yes, in, in, in average, than now. So, and, now, and then, that idea of have a passport and be a citizen of a country and have right or not, was not in the same way that now. So, I try to think in one way in which I don't take what happened now in my historical situations like a fact of nature. I'm thinking that maybe it could be possible to think all the way to manage that situation. Because in other moments that could be an idea. And I don't understand now, don't, uh, neither, why all the people who say, oh, the war is over, we are going to death, Half the people are much more uh, in favor to think, oh, I'm agree, and if you say, we can do the, the things better, all the people say, oh, no, they're over, because that's not possible. So, if I'm going to, if I'm trying to think in the future, both are both two predictions of the future. So, I don't know why the YouTube is 
worse than there used to be in that case. And I think that it could be, we could, we could find a way more respectful with the human rights to manage that things. Because I think that it's not fair. That's only the point. Clearly it's not fair. Is that a problem? I don't understand the first one. But it's, it, it's not fair. Some people are born in the United States, some people are born in Niger. There could be advantages to both, right? Um, but it's not fair. But, yeah. but whoever said it was supposed to be? I think it should be. Why? <laughs> because I have an ethic, ethical commitment with the idea that all the people is equal. But people have never been equal. People are equal only in one instance. In, po in politics, when we create a political realm in which people encounter each other equally, you're creating a situation in which we are actually going to be unable to create such a political realm. Because we can't actually ever decide who's in our political realm. I mean, people are not equal. They never have been. That's, that's one of the... I mean, e equality is, you know, again, from the resident perspective, a, 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 a good idea in politics, but not a good idea in... It's not natural. I mean, no one... We're not born equal. Yeah, of course, it's of course it's not natural. Like the idea of living money. in the United States. Do you realize you're turning people into money, interchangeable, right? I mean, you know, and it, it, it's basically saying that all people are like money. They can you, know, you can move you, you can use a coin here, and it's just you can just do an exchange rate, use it there. Um, th there's a way in which you are <coughs> you're, you're 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 trying to turn the entire uh, the entirety of of humanity into uh, a common, you know, a, a, a mass. I, I I don't think so. I don't. I that's at least that's not my point. Okay. I don't think that the people it's like money. I think that the people is it's like money now. When if you come from Asia and you are rich, and or you are a good uh, technique in your discipline, you can live with me. But if you are poor, not. That's the point that I think. So I'm not thinking in create something really different than our world now. I'm only thinking that the people that are in my country and have half a life could be in there because they are there but with pride, and they can help me. Well, okay, there, there's different questions. There's a question of how to deal with the fact of illegal immigration and people living illegally in countries around the world. And those are important questions, right? Um, whether we should have let them in or not, whether we, once they let them in, we should give them an amnesty, whether we should not let other people in, you know, whether, you know, the reason we let... We had three million people in Spain and all the people in this country uh, is because we want to have them work for less money than most Americans are willing to work for. It's because we want to increase our standard of living. It's an economic question. We could easily decide to pay people more to clean up our tables and clean our lawns, and then we would have less money to spend in the rest of our lives. And one could argue that that's a, that would be an ethical approach to how one lives. We've chosen to bring in illegal people and let them work illegally, which causes a whole host of problems because, as you said, you have people living in dark zones, as you put it, outside the law, which creates a whole lawless culture, which is a, a real um, danger to the rule of law and the idea of law abiding in a sense of civilization, and we're paying the price for that now. We can agree on that. Okay, I, I do agree with you on that. Um, and we can agree or disagree on whether we think we should legalize them or pay Americans more to, to work in these jobs. But that's a fundamentally different argument than to say that we as an American or you as Spain don't have the right to make that decision as a political community. Because everybody is equal and everybody should be able to live wherever they want, which is what I hear you to be saying. Mm -hmm. But those are very different I think you've confused two different questions. 
No? I don't think so. I think that uh, if we live, maybe because I live in a country that is a state with more than one nation inside. Mm -hmm. And I can think in the idea that there are people in living with me with other language, with other culture, with other way to understand the life and they could be part of the state. And yeah. one of the problems, for example in Spain now, a concrete example, is there are uh, young people, women, who are going to the school and they want to wear the shadow. And the people say that it's not a law. I'm not, I'm not going to talk about it, if we should allow that or not. I'm going to say only that one of the main things that the Spanish people say is go to your country. But they are was they was born in Spain. So in that point, the problem of you belong or not because you was born in another country is only in the first generation. Because after that, they are citizens, they stay there, they are Spanish people, and the problem is not I can't think in other and outside of the country in which I could send it to people. I have to think. Okay, now there are Spanish people that are Muslims and want to do the, way, the things in other ways. So we have to live together, respect us, and try to find a way to carry on our national project of living together. So, in that way I don't think I'm going to um, finish with the idea of nation or even the idea of state. It's only that if I think that the state is an instrument to be able to live together from different people, I should be able to transform the, the political form of the state to be able to reach that goal. Because now I think it's not possible to do that <coughs> for a really important people that are living there. That's, that's the idea. I think what's so interesting is that you are trying to say, uh, ignore the importance of the legal illegal distinction. Right? That's what is. So, and that I think creates a whole problem about uh, the right to really create boundaries to say, well, you are a member of your my community. Right? It seems to be central to the idea of political community. Right? Mm -hmm. So, I can understand it if you are saying your, say, let's call it a utopia or this idea that, that, that your proposal is to make every yeah, to make everybody a legal citizen of Spain. That makes sense, right? That is a good proposal. But on the other hand, though, you, you are not quite saying that. You don't, you don't buy the legal legal distinction. Am I, am, I, am, I, am I right? Yeah. That makes it interesting, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, can one really create political communities without the law? Because that's what you are ending up saying, essentially, right? The law is not a central element to creation of a political community. Am I right in understanding that? Yes, yeah. because I think that the law is not the origin, origin of the political community. If we're thinking, for example, here, where people, before the European people come, mm -hmm. and the political community brings up due to the power, not to the law. So, there is that idea of contractualism that is like out of the time and out of the space in which all the people allowed to be like living together, doesn't happen. It's another fiction <coughs> that we believe to carry on with our political life. But why we can't try to change that situation that now means don't uh, consider that difference between legal or illegal to think, okay, that's not the point because we are going to make a law to recognize the people like citizens everywhere in all countries. And that's not something that very different to founding a new political community. Who makes that law? The people. Which people? The world? <laughs> Is this a world government that you're talking about? No. No, no, no. We're going to make a law to recognize all the people in all no. the communities? I think that that's something that happened. For example, in Europe, 
we we have something like the European Union. They can't recognize it for Mexico because they don't want it. Europe can Europe make a law for Mexico? Could Europe recognize the people from Morocco? No, Mexico. Could could they make a law and say that all Mex Mexico has to recognize all people as citizens? If I mean that is not the, the way because the way now is the people who want it could be able to recognize it like citizens, not for my country, as people that are citizens for other country. And I have a commitment with the idea of they should be treated equally as my citizens. So it's not... But I mean, Sanjeev's question, I think, is, is the right one, right? I mean, how can Spain pass a law when Spain includes anyone who might identify with being Spanish. That have happened in Spain twice. I mean, you would basically have to put a ballot up on the internet and anybody in the world who identified as being Spanish could vote on it. I'm not identifying myself like being Spanish. I don't know what that's it. Anyone who wanted to vote on it. No, I mean, on it. I mean, if I don't, I, if I don't know what's the meaning of being Spanish, why I have to, which right I have to ask other people, what do you want, or why do you want to be Hispanic like me if I don't have that feeling? Because that is a feeling, it's not something that I have in my experience. So I kind of think that there is people living in Spain that is and was born there and feel out of place as well. But I think the problem is, is that you're focusing on Spain, you are making that no. argument. For you're making that argument example. for your country, saying your country should be open its borders and let anyone in and out. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you're talking about this kind of utopian ideal that every country do that, that Mexico do that, that you know Niger do that. But who, what authority, what is to say that Mexico must let anyone in? I mean, uh, without a yeah, the idea is there is. No, I'm so sorry, but there is no authority. It's only a citizen, uh, a civic decision, an ethic decision that each different political community could be able to approve if they hold that kind of argument. Okay, so I mean, there are, now there are some countries in which they hold the idea of a universal jurisdiction in their own trials. That means that, for example, Spain could carry a trial against something that happens in Argentina for Argentinian people and the victims were Argentinian as well. And for example, Mexico could carry a trial against Spain for something that happened with the Spanish people in Spain. The idea is, I put it the ideal of human condition on the basis of my own legal order and my own political community, and I decided that as human beings, other people who live in other countries or come in, into my country and are originally from others should be able to treat in order to that ideal. And that, for example, that happens. Many countries in Europe, that is the, the area in which I knew much more about it, had recognized illegal people for economical reasons as citizens. In many cases. So I'm not going I'm not talking about that we are going to do something new. It's only we are going to do something not for economical interest, only because we think that it's fair. That's the, the, the that's the point. And it's not nothing that somebody should impose you to do it. It's something that you decide freely to do because you think that it's fair to that. But who is you? Just would we, we have constant no, referendum? It, all no, the time? in that kind of reference, mm -hmm. the last reference is the individuals who are living in a political community and decided that the ethic value of the of that community to make sense to that community is to respect the human rights. That's the idea. And translate in our democratic process, that, um, that, that uh, value to the, to the law. So 
it's it's nothing. I don't. I think that it's nothing really, really uh, crazy. So you it could be. Even, but you presume everyone shares the same notion of what the basis of political community should be, right? What if my political community, I decide I don't want anyone that's has brown hair to live in my political community. So it seems like this could actually be incredibly dangerous, right? That it, it could create many more dark spaces where people can't participate. In which right, way? The law right now, and the idea of the law being you know, attached to the state, the part of that is to protect people. And yes, it does create dark spaces, but overall you could say it's net good because it protects the Muslim second generation woman in Spain who wants to you know, practice her traditions. Whereas in your world, I could decide that I don't want anybody who's different than me to be part of my political community. And, and so there's yeah. dark spaces everywhere. Though. And in that case, I can't say nothing. So, I mean, I'm only talking to that democratic countries who say and signs that they respect their human rights. And I mean, if they really do it, and it's my argument, it's correct. They should do that. It's only that the point. So it's it's nothing because and because I have said I can't find a more strong fundament for that idea. That only the commitment with the notion of, of human rights. And to change the law and the form the shape of the political community, trying to put that notion in the center of the political community and in the center of the laws. It's only that the thing. But I'm I, I'm agree with you. In that case, even I can think that many people say, "Oh no, that that's not the thing that I want to my country, and I'm not going to change it in that way." So yeah, of course. Okay. I, I mean, I think we're we're about out of the time. So. Um, Thank you very much, Victor, and uh, it was Thank certainly a, a stimulating, I mean, yeah, very stimulating and, and as, as some people said, interesting uh, proposal because <laughs> you don't usually get people coming in here arguing for um, a, radic you know, a truly radical proposal, so I thank you for that, and uh, it, was, it was very interesting, so thank you, Victor. Thank you.